Ladies and gentlemen, please rise. And now to honor America, please join in the singing of our national anthem, representing the three-time Stanley Cup champion New Jersey Devils, Arlette. I feel like I'm, I'm at a game, oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red the bombs bursting was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave or the land of the free and the home of the Happy Devils! A few more days to Jack Hughes becoming a New Jersey Devil Sunday! That is a bold statement on the Let's Go Devils podcast season two episode 37 yeah we had to rip off uh the new jersey the of, the official new jersey devils podcast title road to the 2019 nhl draft i i have to give credit when credit's due we don't just rip off other podcasts out there but i had to borrow that tagline um i am your host sam Wu here with shorts guy and beer baron uh hey guys um hope you guys had a good father's day out there um how about you beer baron did you have a good father's day i did man i had a really good uh father's day uh my birthday and father's day almost fall on the same day this year they will next year so it was fun it's a good celebrating weekend so oh you, that's good you got a whole you got a whole weekend out of this year you only get one Hell day yeah. next year. you only get one day <laughs> exactly uh so um yeah so uh tonight we are going to uh we're going to the fans one in particular that asked us to talk about prospects back in i don't know last november <laughs> and we were kind of like uh maybe we, we should wait a little bit uh but we will have uh, we will have jake wakely on giving him his one and only dream shot on the Let's Go Devils podcast. This is your only chance. Uh, will it be a Wally Pip moment where he replaces one of us on the podcast? Fat chance. Uh, but keep the Mikey McLeod comments to a minimum because I thought about it this past week. You know what? If he's on the fourth line and the pressure is off, I think that fourth line a Zaka McLeod and whatever. And yeah, it, it could be one of the deepest four forward lines 
in the NHL. Young talent, speed, and uh, was with a pretty big upside, I think. For a fourth line, I think that's pretty good. Speed, power, and youth. He just yes. needs to learn how to, he just needs to learn how to tape his stick properly. <laughs> okay, enough. Enough. <laughs> let's, I'm not let's gonna stop. let that one die. <laughs> that one's let's, that one's an actual tangible that's that's a tangible critique that we can that we can always call on for Mikey McLeod is his stick stick taping skills. That was <laughs> tangible and visual. <laughs> so I'm always gonna harp on it. Uh, but anyway, so uh, I'll kick it over to you guys, let you guys talk some puck, and uh, I'll, I'll be doing some producing behind the scenes. Dude, so uh, congratulations go out to the St. Louis Blues, who beat uh, the Boston Bruins in an... Uh, yeah, totally. It was, a, it was a good Game 7, but it wasn't a, a super eventful Game 7. Um, but man, it was a, I thought overall it was a good series, it was a good physical series. A lot of good storylines coming out of it. You know, Chara playing with uh, a broken jaw with like metal plates and screws and bolts yeah. and you know, five to six weeks, and, I think they said for recovery. Yeah, eating a liquid diet and going out there and playing five, six, and seven. That's pretty you wild. Know what? Like I've I've gotta say this in the um, when you listen to series in the morning, they, they give like little sports uh, updates at, at the top of every hour. They may do it at the bottom of the hour too. They said when he was after he got hurt, he was skating with a quote football style uh, helmet or shield on his helmet. And I, when I saw the picture, I was like, "That's not a football style. That's a that's a it's like a full clear with just the lower portion. Like that's nothing new." It, it, for some reason, that bothered me because that wasn't yeah, a football. Yeah. It, it just bothered me. I mean, it's it's you know it's funny because uh, right after the Stanley Cup Finals, right after any kind of playoff run. You know, the laundry list of injuries will come out. You know, like Ryan yeah. O'Reilly was playing with like a broken rib or something like that the entire time and still won to Con Smythe, which is pretty cool. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I do have to address this before I, I continue this thought because it just popped in my head. I watched the end of game seven, I watched most of it, I'd say from you know, middle of second period all the way through the end of the game. And I thought one of the funniest things is when they awarded, um, when they awarded the Blues a cup. I've never heard so many live f bombs. Just oh, I love it. <laughs> just I loved unfiltered. It. it was like f this, f that. I was like, this is fantastic. Yeah, I mean, but that's we can't raw passion. Here, but it was great to hear. That's raw passion and emotion right there, which is what you want to see. Yeah, you know, and that's exactly. that's when that's when winning the Stanley Cup. And I was waiting for it because usually, usually if there's an outburst like that. You know, Doc Emmerich will will cut in and be, you know say something. You know. Uh, kind of quirky and funny about it um, without specifically mentioning it. Mm -hmm. uh, I was waiting for him to cut in like that, and he never did until uh, after that commercial break, and they went back to it. It's like, oh, okay. So yeah. I was all for it. Uh, you know what I really liked? I got to okay. chime in here. I, I really liked all the Brett Hull videos <laughs> throughout the series. <laughs> Dude, that guy can <laughs> rip them. He can, yeah. <laughs> he's one of those dudes that you invite to the party and you're like, "Hey, Brett, just take it a little easy tonight." And the next thing you know, you turn around, his shirt's off, and he's slamming someone through a table. <laughs> God damn it, yeah, Brett! Come uh, on, you know, you know, he's been partying and he's celebrating his cup oh final too. Oh, he's gosh. like, he saw what Ovechkin did last year, and he's like, I, "I'll do that and then some," <laughs> and I'm retired. Hmm. Yeah. Right. So um, I can did. I? Oh, God, go ahead. So it's it's draft week, and I had this random thought the other day, and I really want to throw this at you, and All I right. want to you know throw it to our listeners, and I'm just going to start with a way with a really far fetched, what's in, never going to happen, but I just want to hear it. So we have all this debate: Hughes, Kako, Hughes, Kako, with the Devils keeping the first overall. What? Could they possibly trade to the Rangers to get the second overall pick and draft Taylor Kako? Hall. You think that's all it would take? Taylor Hall. That would be it. I mean, honestly, I just thought it was like something interesting to think about. Like, yeah, what you could yeah. Pack. I know it's not going to happen. There's no way in in, in hell it's going to happen. I just thought, Never. man, with with such a with, with such an awesome top one and two, like, what could the possibility be? Just thinking. 
you know, basically just thinking what's not going to happen. Box, yeah. Yeah. I mean, because the Rangers would never do it. Um, the Devils would never be. That's like when people were talking about trading Taylor Hall over to uh, Philadelphia for uh, Gostosphere. And you're like, no way. They're, they're, you can't trade one of your, you know, uh, top players to somebody in the division. Then you're going to mm -hmm. see them for the next how many ever years if they get re-signed. It's just like it's a stupid. It's not a stupid thing because it's like I think crazy things have happened in the past, but it's it's unrealistic. But let's let's pretend that the Rangers didn't have the second overall pick, and let's pretend uh, I don't know Vancouver. Vancouver had the second overall pick. You know, you trade Taylor Hall for that second overall pick. Some people would say the Taylor Hall and maybe like two of the second round picks or something like that would yeah. get you the number two overall pick because that's a that's a it would cost a lot, but damn, that would be pretty crazy. Yeah, that were, would be pretty if you crazy. To figure that out. Yeah, and it just like I said, the, the thought came to me randomly, and it was just something to think about. Like, wow, like what could we do, or what would the possibility be to get that second overall pick? Because you know, one and two are are uh, you know that this year they're just so they're just so they're going to be impact players. And it'd just be amazing to have them all on one team. So yeah. no, no, I get it. You know, it's funny because uh, I got to look at now. I got to scroll backwards um, because David <laughs> Holiday, David Holiday was talking about he wanted us to talk about the the Truba rumors that have been floating around. And I got to I got to be honest with you, like the Devils have been tied to Truba for a little while. Uh, yeah, some of the sources that I have looked into. Um, say that it's a, a very strong possibility that they're going to make a push for it but it doesn't mean anything and i hate to say this guys because you with rumors we we've i know you say this a lot but we've talked about this multiple times where you can't get excited about a rumor you can't even yeah. you can't even put it in in the, the back of your mind like all right well this could possibly happen because the, the reality is is you never know what's going to happen you know mm -hmm. nobody knew that Taylor Hall was going to come to the Devils for Adam Larson for crying out loud, or yeah, Adam Henrique. That was rumor get wasn't even out. out there. Exactly, or Adam Henrique was going to get shipped out. Uh, you know, a week after he had uh, a charity event that he was, think, you know, the main like host. Day? For. I thought it was or, like maybe the, it was the next after. day. The next day. But I mean, you never think about these things. You don't think about like what's going to happen. And sometimes rumors pop out. People leak things, whether it be on purpose to try to drive up the price on somebody else or. To try to yeah, yeah. Uh, do whatever you know, uh, maneuver around, but for the most part, uh, rumors are exactly what they are. Some of them come true because, listen, you could throw a bunch of crap against the wall and it will stick, right? And if I yeah. sit there and I say uh, the Devils are going to go after Truba and it's going to be 100 percent true, and uh, they're going to give I don't know two second round picks and Miles Wood, and you throw it up against the wall, and then all of a sudden that happens, you're like, hey man, I told you, I told you it was going to happen. So, but, yeah, yeah, and it's just it's it's the same thing in the soccer world, you know, my. You know, one of my teams, Liverpool, just won the Champions League. And now everyone's freaking out because rumors are coming out about, you know, players leaving. Uh, there's an infographic that one of the groups I follow posted. And it's it's basically like a, a, a chart of reliable resources. Like if it comes from like if it comes from the club, then it's going to happen. So if whatever comes from the Devils is obviously going to happen. Then there were two. There were also two sources underneath for like a second level that are very good and very close to the club. So if it comes from them, it's probably going to happen. Then it just goes down the list of the things that are the sources that are not there. Long story short, look at the source that anything comes from and read the article and see what's there. Like that, like we, we talked about it last week and week before the, the, the first article about Taylor Hall possibly being traded all came from one single vague quote in one write up. And then it, everyone ran with it. Because everyone's just dying to have some kind of content. Because you can only talk about the first, you know, like we said, only the first two overall picks. So, you know, rumors are going to happen. The Devils are absolutely going to be more active this year in free agency because there's much more to be active with. We have the mm -hmm. space. We have the, you know, we, we have the first overall pick coming in once again. We have a player that Taylor Hall is definitely going to want to see some level of improvement in order to stay. Because you know, think about who he's played for so far, Edmonton and us. And, you know, we haven't been successful, you know, except for one season since he's been here. And we all know Edmonton wasn't successful what whatsoever. So yeah. the guy wants to win. He's not getting any younger. He wants to play around a team that possibly has a chance to win the championship. 
and he's going to want to see the Devils do something. So they absolutely need to do something. And he has every yeah. right to he has he has every right to be in that conversation too. Cuz as long as he stays, as long as he stays if if he signs long term, he's our next captain after Andy Green. Yeah. You know, that's what I'm Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy too because the uh, the buyout period starts this week. I got to look at I got to look at the everything. Like, this weekend was just crazy, so I'm uh, my the research is a little crazy. off today. Exactly. Yeah, but I mean like I know the buyout period is happening soon. There's people that speculate, uh, you know, Andy Green could be bought out. Uh, somebody even threw out uh, Travis Zajac. And I'm like, you know, that's another thing, too, is you have to be smart when you're doing these types of things. You're not going to just buy out somebody for the sake of buying them out. You're not going to yeah. buy out your captain for the most part. I don't think Andy Green has declined that terribly where they need to buy him out. I don't think he's a top pairing defenseman by any means, but. I don't think he's, you know, oh, man, this guy's just so terrible. We need to get rid of him. So I don't know. It's, you know, it's one of those things where we could sit here and speculate all we want. And the anticipation and the eagerness of getting up to the draft is just kind of like killing us. I know it's killing me. Like, just get there. Just art, please. Let's just I want to see the number one overall draft pick. I want to see this thing start to get into motion. And I want to see the pieces that Ray are going to is going to put together to have a competitive team for next year. Yeah. And now is the time to do it. You know, we're going to, we have the second, this is uh twice in three years. We have the first overall draft pick and we've, we've got to start building now and we don't want to be the Edmonton Oilers of the East. That's, that's for sure. Cause look what that has gotten them. It's gotten them nowhere, mm -hmm. but this, unlike last summer, there are good players available and there are a number of players available and a number of players that the devils can realistically afford without breaking the bank. And, you know, let's, let's face it. We've got a lot of money to spend too. You know, it's, it's easier to spend someone else's money, but uh, I still think that this summer they're going to be much more active. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, like I'm just reading some of the, the comments over in the, uh, the Facebook group, David, uh, or, David Holiday said, what is the price that you would give to Taylor Hall before you said no thanks? So he said 10 million, 11 million. That's right in that ballpark. So it's like either it's either going to be 10 million or 11 million dollars. You're going to want to say, all right, that's that's going to kind of be your line in the sand. If he's asking for 12 or above, um, then it, it might be a little too pricey. You know, you got to think about it. Yeah, he was just. Though. I don't know if he you, would. You would, give him, you would give him 12? You would give him 12 no, no, a year no, 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 for the no. next six years? I don't know if he would ask for that amount. I mean, you never, you never know. I, I don't know, man. It's just, Speculating is hard. What do you think, Sam? Yeah, speculating is hard. I, You know, you, you read all these E5s, E4s. <laughs> We don't talk about that crap. I know. Uh, you know, maybe this is pure speculation, but I think uh, that this guy is going there. It, you know, it's all it's all entertainment to me. It, it's the rumors; they're fun. They're, it's really good for you know the the Facebook group bashing. You know, this person said this, that, whatever. But what's really funny, oh, what's wait, really wait, funny is, go, go ahead. ahead. Sorry. No, I'm just no, saying. I, what's, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Sam. Go. I, oh, I'm just in a, no, no, I'm in just stalling mode because Shorts Guy needs to take a break for about five minutes or some sort. But anyway, but what's really funny is that sometimes when Ray Shiro or the agent clarifies, like, well, we don't know where that came from. This and that. Sometimes these guys, and I'm not saying they were they were doing it with the latest rumors with the you know the Ford period, but sometimes you know what if if you're the party that's about to make a trade or whatever, sometimes you would leak stuff out to the out to the media just to get a feel well, what the fans are thinking. Well, that's that's been proven in the past, not just in in, in the NHL, but that's you know across the board in sports that you know GMs will play the game. And they, you know, if they have a, a player, look at what happened. This is a good example of this, all right? So look at what happened in St. Louis 
um, right around January. I think it was right right before they started to turn things around. Um, their owner basically blasted the team and said, uh, everybody's available. And then the GM, everybody's available. You know, Tarasenko is available. We don't care. Everybody on this team is available. This team is, sucks. They're terrible. They're not going to win anything. We're, we're having a fire sale. Get rid of everybody. And then they made a few moves. They fired the coach. Uh, and, and all of a sudden, things started to click together. And, it, you know, the, the team goes on a run. A lot of that stuff is, is, is you know, uh, somebody standing up there and puffing up their chest or, like, fu- you know, fluffing out their feathers just to kind of put on a show. And that comes down to, like, trades. It comes down to what's going to do. What are you going to do in the draft? You don't think that the social media account that's connected to the Devils, when they started, you know, kind of pushing – uh, Capo Caco highlights out there and saying, man, look what he's doing. He's ripping it up. You don't think that that's the I, GM sitting well, back there saying like, go ahead, do that one. Put that video up there so they think we might take him. So they think we might take him. They might panic. I laugh every time the devil's social media puts, you know, Capo out there like oh look at how he's doing you know in the finals leading his his country to victory and i'm like it's all game is uh, gamesmanship oh all uh, that stuff. at the same time it's like you're hyping up the the second overall picks pick you know at the <laughs> same time you know what i mean yeah but like that. but, what, but the, what they're also doing is they're putting that kind of stuff out there because let's say the rangers are dead set they want Kako and they want they they're like we can't we don't even care about Hughes we want this kid this is the answer to our franchise this is who we want to have in our locker room this is who we want uh, uh playing wing for us for the next 10 years so let's just say that that's what they're pushing at and the devils are like yeah man listen you want to give us something for the number one overall pick and we'll go to two you take one and then we'll take you know one of your other number one you know one of your other late round picks and stuff like that yeah, you could take Kako number one. That's fine. We'll take Hughes. He, you know, he's a bum anyways. We'll take him number two. You have your 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 pick. You get to do the whole we're number one thing, and we'll take Hughes, and then we'll take, you know, uh, a couple of your picks in the later round. What about you Shatner? Know, I mean, that's, yeah. <laughs> well, he's he's gonna get bought out. Hey, don't get don't get surprised if he gets bought out by the Rangers. Um him and Mark it could, Stahl. It could be a good way for them to dump him too. It's true. I mean, he's done nothing since he's gone there. He's virtually been impossible or er, invisible. Uh, Nick Volano chimed in. He said uh, that was clickbait. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> That's also true, Nick. That's also Thank- true. Thanks for listening. Thank God I'm not a GM for the Devils because I'd be, you know, I'd be toying with the Rangers right now. I would be absolutely making up stuff, leaking stuff to the media. All these like oh, yeah. different scenarios, screwing yeah. Screwing, I, I'd even make a, a I'd about team make locations. A, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I'd be I'd be totally screwing with them, and then even like making phone calls to the last second, and then when the and then when Gary Bettman says uh, New Jersey, you know uh, what's your pick, you know, and then he announced it, and it'd be like Jack Hughes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you become like the ultimate like uh, WWE heel, like this yeah. evil villain of a uh, GM. <laughs> uh, calling, yeah. uh, calling, calling all the bars and establishments around MSG to say you want to have a uh, Capo Caco first overall pick party. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Worrying or, about prices, yeah. or, or <laughs> I get up, I, I get up to the podium, right, and I'd be like. And I, and I would do the biggest stall tactic. Like if I was the Devils GM, I get on the podium. And, uh, I, yeah, I'd be like, <laughs> I like to thank the good people of Vancouver for their hospitality at this year's ni- 2019 NHL no, you're draft. Gonna be a heel. You got to be a heel so you could be like, this city's a bum. I hate this city. I'm just here to make my pick. <laughs> Vancouver can cram it. The whole city stinks. <laughs> you haven't won a cup. <laughs> e- even St. Louis has won a cup now. You, what, what's the matter with you, Vancouver? <laughs> yeah, and just stall, stall, stall because everybody's waiting, including Devils like, fans, Ranger fans. <laughs> exactly. A twenty-minute rant. 
<laughs> one pounding, on the, pounding on the podium. <laughs> be, be I hate like, everything about that city. I hate the city, but the only thing I like is my dollar goes a little bit further than yours. <laughs> <laughs> congratulations, a much established city than this place will ever be. Yeah. Uh, also, congr congratulations, Seattle. Congratulations to the Toronto Raptors. At least they kept their NBA team and won the championship <laughs> for the first time. You know, just keep on stalling, 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 stalling. Yeah. This, yeah, I want to thank the Rangers for my sloppy seconds. <laughs> and they could go cram it up theirs, too. <laughs> and just just keep going, 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 going. And the road to the 2019 NHL draft <laughs> pre presented by Investors Bank. They know, keep cutting the commercial <laughs> break and they come back and they're like, he, well, folks, he's, I don't know what to tell you, but he's still going. He's now threatening Capo Caco with a lead pipe. Uh, he said he put a hit out on uh, a couple of teams in the tri-state area. <laughs> He, he's friends with Tony Soprano. He doesn't know that's a fictitious character. <sighs> and then, and then after all that, you pick Byram as the number all number one overall pick. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Defense first. Suck it. <laughs> Boom, just drop him like. Chug a beer. Somebody throws you a beer from the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. And this is and this is why we are not in charge of important things. This is why we're only in charge no. of this podcast. Because otherwise, if we were if we ran the world or the country or the league, it would just be a disastrous mess. But we'd have a good time doing it. Exactly. Wait, I gotta see Wait, the Kings couldn't trade anything, it would take a legitimate star and a first round pick in the top ten this year. Yeah, this I'm sorry, Nick, just reading off of something that he was replying to somebody yeah. else. But um, what would it take for the Devils to trade the top pick? Ellie is two. But Ellie wants Byram, I was, I was hearing. Like, they're all they're all set and picking him. I mean, not that they if wouldn't Chicago take Hughes or Kako first, but. Yeah, if Chicago doesn't take Byram, but. I don't know. It'll be interesting. It's it's a deep draft, so it's like one of those like you know we can sit here and say whatever all night. What the hell is gonna? Yeah. it's not gonna make a difference. Go go go! Figure the 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 Devils have the first overall picks two out of three years. The the first year they get it, it's it's seen as a very light draft with with not a lot of good prospects, and then they get it this year again, and it's a really deep draft with possibly a a, a game changer, a, a franchise changer of a player, two of them possible mm -hmm. two of them for the top one and two and then it it's just as deep going you know going down as well which is you know much different than than the last draft we had uh, a couple years ago yeah and it's funny because i look at this draft class and i keep looking at who the devils could get at 34 which is still a very valuable pick you know yeah. it's that deep of a draft i don't know if this is and this is a good question for everybody out there and anybody that you know, like somebody like Nick, ahem, ahem. Um, Nick, is this a uh, a draft that's comparable, in your opinion, to the two, uh, 2003 draft? Where you got to think about it, the Devils picked what 17th and got and Zach Parise 17th or 19th, and they got Parise. So, a lot of people look to that draft as being one of the best drafts in in the league in the last like 20, 30 years. Yeah, and I'm curious how much movement you're going to see on draft day of, of teams jockeying for position and trying to get a better... Yeah, there's a lot of talent, and you know you have a lot of teams that are probably try, you know, eyeing one specific player that could possibly go you know, prior to them. Like If you're going to see, with a draft like this, you could possibly see a, a lot of player and pick movement you know, mm -hmm. wheeling and dealing on the floor, basically. So uh, I'm going to be curious to watch it and, and see as much as I can. No, oh, never mind. Nick just shot, torpedoed my my comparison to the 2003. Uh, Thanks gotta, a lot, now, Nick. Now I got to read this. Uh, <laughs> I hear you got somebody like uh, one of the McKenzie brothers from the Great White North uh, on the other line. Is that true, eh? <laughs> Hey, yeah. I, I found, a, I found I, a mouse and a bottle of your beer, eh? 
<laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, but oh uh, God, really of all time, if you don't know what I'm talking about. Well, I have the infamous Jake Wakely. He, this is his dream shot. I think he's a little nervous. He's on the Bobby's Auto Care hotline. Bobby's Auto Care. 2151 Route 57 in beautiful Washington, New Jersey. We have the infamous Jake Wakely. Jake, what's going on, man? I'm doing good. You guys doing? Doing well, what's man. Up there, Jake. All right. All right. So, what you what do you have for us? Uh, Hughes, Kako. Who would you select? I would personally use. I think it comes down to things always have center over the winter. I just always think center's the side. When trying to build a team, I always want to look at the middle. If you look at Kirk from 2009, they've won three Stanley Cup. Getty Melk, Crosby, and the Chicago Black, obviously, won three Stanley Cups with their center. Well, and then Boston Brew uh, with the center depth. Of, so, stats speak itself in my But I know Ray, he has his, like, somewhat has. You know what? I, I'm sorry, Jake. Uh, your connection is bad. I apologize uh, for that. I just got to put you back on hold, guys. Um, let me work with uh, Jake uh, behind the scenes, and I'll let you guys take over. I don't, I don't know what was wrong with that connection. I don't know if it was on his or – yeah, but he's calling internationally, so we better figure this one out. Yeah. The exchange rate. He even happens yeah. over the telephone lines, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounded like Jake was all about picking Hughes. It's just that's got to be the direction the Devils go. Yeah, and that's it, it. You know what? Like we said it, I think like uh, last week or maybe even before. It's one of those things where it seems like this is the dead set choice. We've had uh, some discussions about it. We had our wonderful friend uh, who's been chiming in, also Nick Villano, about his thoughts and and what and what the devil should do. And he was very animate about pick Jack Hughes, pick Jack. Hughes. Oh yeah, I totally. think he's like ten times in a row, or he might have yelled at us, and scolded Sam. Um, but honestly, like it's after Hughes, like I'm already assuming that we're, we're picking Hughes. So my, my question is what's going to happen, uh, happen after that. Are they yeah. going to flip some of those, some of those, uh, second round picks that they have into assets? You know, what, what is, what is going to happen in the war room of the New Jersey devils or the war table, uh, of the devils on Friday night. And I can't wait. I can't wait to see what they do. There's, I have a feeling there's going to be some wheeling and dealing. And guess what? If there's not, they, you know, they're bringing in a bunch of guys that have second round talent. So, you know, just yeah. stocking up the cupboards. No, and there's going to be plenty. It's, it's just, I think the optics of it all is you kind of have to pick Jack Hughes. And I still don't think that Kako having a really good tournament is sufficient enough to get him the overall pick. So okay. I just I, I, I still think that 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 Hughes and I've been asked this question a bunch um over the last couple o- over the last couple days and I just I def I absolutely think that uh that it's gonna be it, it's it's gotta be Hughes. Mm. All right well let's try this again uh, I we had a little technical difficulties, but back on the Bobby's Auto Care hotline, we got super fan, Devils fan, Jake Wakely from from Canada. Uh, Jake, can you hear us now? I can hear you guys now. Yes, uh, oh, much, much, better. much. Yeah, uh, well, it's a lot just, better. So, Jake, uh, go back to your. Let's go back to the beginning. Our first question we asked you. Uh, would you draft Hughes or Kako? Jack Hughes. For me, there we go. Um, Jack, Jack Hughes, like just, just with Jack, like his ability to enter the zone with top nut speed will force defenders to back off. He's 
he's obviously got the ability to be a difference maker. I've been watching Jack Hughes for two, three years, and he's just an electrifying, dynamic player. His elusiveness with his speed and the pucks and his ability to tack lanes drives defenders absolutely insane. He's always a step ahead. His quick first step is probably one of the best I think I've ever seen. His edge work and his hockey IQ is off the charts. Just like just when you think you've got Jack covered, he's always one step ahead of you with his IQ and his thoughts with the puck. He can always make a play. And he, I always I think with Jack, like his his shot doesn't get enough credit maybe as some people think. I, if I'm comparing one player, like his speed to one player in the NHL, for me, it, it's Connor McDavid. And I think for the Devils, the ability to have a one-two punch with him and Nico Heischer down the middle for the next 10 years is, to 15 years is, is just too hard to pass up. Now, I don't know, generational talent, a lot of people say, is he a generational talent? Like, generational is such a touchy subject when it comes to describing a player. For mm-hmm. Jack Hughes, I... I wouldn't say he's generational just yet, but I wouldn't. I would say he's not that far off in that category. So let me ask you, Jake. And first of all, thanks for all the uh, the love and the appreciation and the birthday wishes. I appreciate that. And uh, <laughs> you know, you, you keep Mikey McLeod's name out your mouth. Just saying. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but uh and a real note you know one of the things that i really appreciate about, uh, about you jake is is you have a very vast knowledge of what's going on um so now that we all assume or like we were just saying we're pretty sure that jack hughes is going to be the number one overall pick so at that 34th pick what do you think the devils are going to do because obviously i don't think they're going to trade that as an asset i think they would probably trade but you never know you never know uh they probably trade the other two so let's assume that they keep that 34th overall pick. Who do you think, in your opinion, or who do you hope that they will uh, pick with that with that 34? Well, with the 34th pick, I have three guys in mind here that, I, uh, that I've that i watched and I've kind of took some notes down on. The, f- the first guy is Bobby Brink from the United States National Team Development Program. Uh, he's a right winger, 5'10", 165 pounds. Uh, he had a 1.58 point points per game with the Sioux City Musketeers. Um, his hockey sense is, is special. Um, and just his determination and his competitiveness is just what scouts seem to adore with this kid. The only downfall I would say with Bobby is he's, he's not a great skater, but I think with the proper uh, coach and whatnot, that's something he can, he can fix. Uh, as for what he did last year, uh, he had 43 games. 35 goals, 32 assists, and 68 points. So the skill is definitely there. I just, I just think with Bobby's uh, as a hockey player, his skating is just something he needs to work on. If I had to compare him to two players, I would probably say Joe Pavelski and Jake Gensel of the Pittsburgh Penguins. It's mm. a good comparison. Yeah, and I, w- I would take I, both yeah. of those. I would, I would take both of those players. Now, Jake, I don't know if I'm gonna, there. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to pose you the, the, the fanciful question I asked earlier. What would you what would you take as far as uh, a trade to get the second overall pick along with the first? Would you make that trade or would you what would you package? Uh, would you say that that's just completely out the door? Just curious about what you think. I personally would say it's completely out the door. I don't I don't see it happening. As for who I would give up, uh, I it's a hard none one. of us. <laughs> it's a hard one. Obviously, none of us want to see uh, Taylor Hall go and whatnot. But I think if if Taylor come draft time, which I don't think he'll make his decision then, but I think if he went to ratio and he said, "I'm flat out not re-signing here." Then he would be the probably the starting point on what I would I would package him together as much as I would hate to see him in a Rangers uniform like every other Devils fan. But yeah, yeah. and you'd, you'd have to I agree with you. You'd have to probably give up a couple second round picks. I don't know if he'd have to give up the first next year. I mean, it might come up, but I doubt it. But in all honesty, yeah, I just I just don't see that happening. Oh yeah, no, I know it's not going to happen, but it's just something I thought of uh, earlier this week, and I was like, wow, just. Interesting thing to, to just even just to consider since it's not going to happen, but 
hey, this is our show. We can talk about whatever we want. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we can, create, all, um, we can trade the whole damn team if we want. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, uh, right. what do you? What is yeah. your speculation about uh, uh, all these kind of rumors? I'll bring it up to you too, because uh, even now, as I'm kind of scanning through things, uh, even Larry Brooks, uh, God, I hate yeah. seeing that name. Uh, it had kind of brought it up, but of course he, he makes it seem like the Rangers are uh, the front the front runners for Truba. So, w- what is your opinion yeah, about right. uh, the Devils trying to aggressively go after uh, uh, Jacob Truba? You know, it's it's an interesting thing because I mean they have they have a defenseman named Damon Severson who's I mean I, he, an offensive defenseman. I don't. I mean, he does a lot of similar things to Jacob Truba. So, I mean, I kind of, like, I understand it, but I don't understand it. But at the same time, Truba's, he's 25, and that that that, that kid's legit. So, but what, mm. as for what the Devils would have to give up, I mean, do you really, do you want to give up a Jesper Bratt and a Jesper Boatfist and a couple second-round picks and maybe a third? Hmm. I mean, if I was to consider a package, my my guess would be. I know some fans might not want to hear this, but Sammy Vatnin, Miles Wood, maybe a second round pick and next year's first. I'd try and do it without giving up next year's first, but that would probably be the general ballpark you'd be talking about to get Jacob Truba. Yeah, and it seems like Eric Carlson is probably going to be resigning in uh, San Jose for it, or at least the, most of the reports that are kind of coming out is the fact that he's uh, getting close to probably signing one of the richest contracts in NHL history as for a defenseman. So then yeah, it starts to he's going to make more than Drew Doughty. Yeah, which and, is and crazy. S- and I mean, he's worth and, it, but I mean, I don't know, but yeah, whatever. San, San Jose is absolutely desperate to get over that line. They've they're like the perennial losers in the playoffs. They're always hot. They're always hot, and then they just fall or they run up against the wall and they just can't get get past that line. It just seems like they're more than willing to do whatever they need to get to get over that line. I think San like for for San Jose like for Eric Carlson. I mean, I mean, I understand like why he would want to stay there. Like you know, California. It's, nice weather, et cetera. But for San Jose, like how the real question, like Eric Carlson's probably going to have to ask himself and talk it over with his family though, is how much longer is San Jose really going to compete? Like Joe Pavelski's getting up there. Joe Thornton's going to retire probably this year or next year. Like they don't, besides Couture and like Hurdle and maybe Timo Meyer, like who really does San Jose really have? Mm-hmm. That's only my concern for Eric Carlson and San Jose, but yeah, I mean they they definitely do have an expiration date coming up with a lot of those players for San Jose, but you know they San Jose may also be be they could possibly be offering him the ability to have a say on on who they're going to bring in and to build the team around him, uh, you know, along with that, which he he may be all for. He maybe he he could possibly want to be be the centerpiece of a team. I think their their yeah. their question is goaltending. Throughout the playoffs, their goaltending was hot and cold, and they just could not yeah. string anything consistent together. And their goalie's name is completely yeah. escaping me right now, and I just I can't think of it. Martin, but it's Martin just, Jones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, Martin I, Jones. For some yeah, reason, was, I couldn't think of it. He he was great, and then he was not. Yeah, he was he was great, and then he was not, and then it's just like yeah. I'm, I've never been a big fan of him myself, but I mean, for San Jose though, like, and this could benefit the devils in sort of a way if they re-sign Eric Carlson, cause they don't have a lot, like they don't have a lot of cap flexibility. So like they have an RFA and like Kevin LeBanc and like Timo Meyer and stuff. So is, are those two guys that the devils would be interested in like calling Doug Wilson and asking him about and trying to acquire, like, I know they're letting, Giannis Donskoy test the market this year, so that's another guy that could help bolster the Devils' bottom six mm-hmm. if they decide to go that route. But I mean, those are three names I I would keep an eye on for Devils fans if Eric Carlson resigns and the ratio decides he wants to do business with San Jose. 
Well, the Devils have a lot of cap space that's going to allow them to to sort of be the savior of all the cash trap teams out there. So I, I wouldn't yeah. shock me to see the Devils not really make too much of a splash in the beginning of free agency, but wait for all the teams to overspend and then sort of sh- you know sort of show up and be like, "Hey, you have a problem. We have a solution," and just kind of pick up pieces Absolutely. that way, which would be super shrewd. And you know what? I can see Ray Shiro being that that type of shrewd to letting all the other teams shoot themselves in the foot and then be like, you know, just, just come in as the, you know, to the guy to save the day money wise. Yes. So, yeah. So like for teams like that, you obviously Winnipeg, Nashville with PK Subban, the Leafs with Andreas Johnson, Kasperi Kapanen, William Nylander, Tampa Bay, they need, they need cap relief bad. And those are kind of the four teams I'm kind of keeping my eye on for as for who the Devils could be doing business with here in the next couple of weeks. You know, it's really funny you bring up uh, PK Subban. I know people were starting to freak out because he mentioned the New Jersey Devils in a uh, uh, first take interview, and it was one of those things where it was like it was just a mention. It wasn't like he was like, "Oh, I can't wait to be a Devil" or you know, like anything like that. He was making a comparison of uh, a good, a great two way uh, defensive team, you know. But yeah. with all that being said, if the Devils were able to make a trade and they were able to figure out a way to get a defenseman, and I had my choice between Truba or PK, uh, PK Subban, I think I would take Subban all day, every day. Yeah, the only, yeah, the age factor might factor in why they might lean Truba, but yeah, PK Subban would probably be the way I would go. And people will look at his cap hit and say, oh, nine million dollars i don't want that because that's a lot of money you know we have to resign hall and he sure needs an extension but if you if you really think about it pk suban's only got three years left at nine million so when his nine million comes off comes off the cap then that's when jack hughes or if by some miracle capo caco gets drafted first overall needing that's when they'll need a new contract so it's not like the devils will be fighting for cap space to try and lock those guys up because they're going they're obviously going to be due for a hefty payday when the time comes yeah for sure yeah totally or but at least I you hope think... they're ready for a hefty payday because that means they've been putting up some numbers so well yeah and that's yeah. and that's not a guarantee either at this point you know <clears throat> taylor hall had a you know a down year with injury and you know there's no way he... i know what the devils would pay him because they, they know what he can do and they know what he means to the franchise but you know, maybe I'm crazy for saying this, but you know, if, if he were to just kind of go out and, and test free agency this year, which I know he can't, I don't know if he would make as much, you know, coming off that injury year right now. So I, I, I think the Devils are in a good spot with him to the point where they, you know, they can possibly use that in their favor. I, I just want to, I want to. And he's only Jake? played five games in his whole in his whole career in the playoffs, Taylor Hall. But if you if you really think about it, though, like with who New Jersey is going to be adding here in the draft, the amount of cap space they have in the next couple of years, and like who's coming up, like they have Ty Smith, they have Bokefist, they have Zetterlin, and all these other prospects coming up here in the next few years. But the amount of money that New Jersey has to fill out the rest of their roster and make them a serious contender here in the very near future. Like, I don't know if Taylor Hall is going to be able to really find that anywhere else. I just, I haven't, I don't have the numbers in front of me on teams with their cap space and stuff, but yeah, I just, I just don't think he's going to find that anywhere else. And he seems to like it here, but he would have to go to a ready-made team. And the only team that I can think of that he would that would make sense for him, like, would maybe put them over the top, would be Calgary, but because he's from there. But other than that, I I can't think of any team off the top of my head that's going to have the money to amp up to sign him. That's got a lot of cap space as of right now. Yeah. Hey, well, Jake, I got to tell you, man, it has been an absolute honor to have you on. Finally, get you on. This happened now. We're gonna. McLeod chirps to a minimum. Besides his tape job, but you know. 
<laughs> See, all I heard was tape job. Yeah, Michael McLeod's tape job is still pretty bad. Thank you. <laughs> and it always Thank will you. be. I came back just in time to hear that comment. That's exactly it. <laughs> Ooh, I disconnected for a second there. Yeah, so did I. And then I came back to hear about Mikey McLeod's tape job. Yeah, I know. I know. It's we're having some uh some issues out in the in this area. Um, yeah, out in internet land. But yeah. I mean, uh Jake, if you're still around, uh thank you so much for coming on. I don't know if he heard that uh or did not hear that. Um but honestly, it was nice to have him on. It was good to get that uh that opinion or that that kind of uh see what his thoughts were on everything and uh outside of his mikey mcleod opinion everything was uh, very well spoken <laughs> yeah, i thought so as well i thought so as, uh except for that tape job comment anyway <clears throat> so it's a for some reason i'd been so busy recently and i just i thought today i'm like oh you know what we're gonna talk about the podcast and I, it's just it, it's like oh the draft is friday yeah it's coming up quick or it's coming not up quick enough friday no, it's it's coming up quick. That's for sure. Um, you know, like this is gonna like we've talked about this week for since April. You know, this is the week we've been talking about since April. We haven't had anything else to talk about? I know. However, it's here, and just kind of looking at at different things here. Um, you know, looking at top prospects and all kinds of stuff like that. What am I looking for? Okay, so Hughes is the center. Kako is the right wing. And one of the – I just was curious if there was anything that could possibly be comparable. You know, two really good players at the top. And the one I found real quick was – what year was this? Blah, 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 blah. 2004, Ovechkin was first. Malkin was second. Mm. They went to rivals. You had the left wing going first, the center going second. Uh, I just thought that that was uh, I just thought that was an, an interesting comparison there because both those players turned out to be superstars in their own rights, which I saw an article earlier this week about the possibility of Shiro trading for Malkin, bringing him to New Jersey. Which would be awesome. I've always been an advocate for bringing that dude in. On this. But I just thought that that was an interesting article to read and the possibility that, you know, Phil Kessel could be Oh, man. Yeah, we're having internet issues tonight. <laughs> it, it just took a dump. Yeah. Yeah. Well, happens. yeah. Well, why don't we do this? Um, why don't we just uh, let the listeners know that we're going to do something special on Thursday. Uh, Friday. Probably, we're saying Friday. You can keep say on Thursday. saying Thursday. You keep screwing this up, Sam. Ah. All right. So Friday. Draft day. Draft day. We're going to do a podcast in the morning. Kind of like a, a pregame podcast, but yep. we'll be pregaming in the morning. So we'll run throughout the day. You can listen to our podcast. And then... Right after the Devils make their pick, special guest Nick Volano will be on to do the podcast from Tampa. Uh, Beer Baron, are you trying to chime in? Uh, we can't even hear him. No. Yeah. yeah, we're really running the issues. And for anyone yeah. going to the draft party, uh, look for me. I should be roaming around the draft party just to check it out and see what's there and uh, possibly jumping on with Sam immediately after the draft. Immediately after the Devils pick, and uh, is it just me or does Beer Baron look? Oh, when Beer Baron, when you were frozen, you almost looked like Kyle Palmieri for a second there. <laughs> wow! <laughs> but, but yeah, anyone going to the draft party? If you see me, say hi. Uh, <laughs> you know, you all know what I look like. I don't know what everyone else looks like because you are all in Facebook land and YouTube and all that stuff, but. Yeah, if you see me, say hi. I have my Let's Go Devils podcast shirt on, and you know, waiting for the big overall, you know, first overall pick. Seems you know that the Devils do. You think Boyle resigns, Benny? Yes, I, I know. think that Boyle resigning for cheap is a possibility. Absolutely. Uh, all right. Well, we're calling it a night. I hear the music. 
Yeah, we got to call it night. I, we have internet issues. We have power issues. Thank you to JCPNL for the most reliable service of power uh, to the wonderful homes in New Jersey. Yeah, thanks. Anyway, uh, just want to thank Jake Wakely for coming on. Uh, we'll be back Friday with all sorts of content. We may have some special guests. Beer Baron, I hope you feel better. Happy Father's Day. Till next time, let's go Devils. It's just on our faces. <laughs>